excuse me, I'm being stored. Where are you taking me? This is Scruffles. She's become internet famous for dragging me to the bedroom. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm Kate Russell, and before I became internet famous for having my finger in a ferret's mouth, I reported on technology for the BBC. I can't go in the Get ready for an overload of ridiculously cute fangs as I try and fail to find a bedtime buddy for my clingy ferret. Scruffles, I can't go in the bedroom. The first thing you need to know is some ferrets have a very high stashing instinct. I can't go in the I'm still quite new to ferret keeping, so when this short video went viral, it sparked a lively debate in the comments about why she was obsessively stashing me. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're biting too hard in your desperation to love me in the bedroom because it's beginning to hurt me. Why do you think she does it? If you have any ideas, drop a comment down below. No! And if my mom reflexes just really impressed you, why not give that like button a boot while you're down there? Okay, on with the story. Oh, where are we going? After gaining more than a million views in a few weeks, it became clear that the internet was fascinated by Scruffles' pash for the stash. Comments ranged from she thinks you're food to she thinks your fingers are babies to you're going to get rabies to at this stage you should just cut off your finger and give it to her. So, so you see she's absolutely desperate to get me into bed. It wasn't long before people were so invested they began suggesting ways to satisfy my clingy ferret that didn't involve lopping off my index finger, thankfully. I've got my scarf. Go on, As instructed, I'd been wearing it all day to get it nice and stinky. But apart from a few interested sniffs, it was clearly no substitute for my pinky. <laughs> oh, you still want mommy. <laughs> then loads of people started commenting that I needed to buy her a soft toy and sent it with, well, me. So I ran a poll on Amazon's stock of the finest pet safe plushies. You spoke and I got my credit card out. Sloth and crocodile. The crocodile's actually hollow, but I should actually be able to put some of my old smelly socks or something in there. All that remains to be done is... For three days and nights, I kept the plushies under my top, even taking them on a flight to Iceland. Yes, I really did that. I feel like they might be cooked. Mm. And they definitely smell of me. And I did buy a cheeky sheep as well. I'm going to store them in a Ziploc bag and then I need to take them down to the studio and wait for Scruffles to feel the big love. It took a few days. Scruffles moves at her own pace when it comes to dishing out the love. But eventually the urge to take me to bed came upon her. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 100% I want mummy in bed moment. So it's time to deploy our plushies. There was immediate interest from both ferrets, sniff, sniff, sniffing all over. It definitely smells of mummy. Come on then, come up to bed. So this has been in bed with me and up my top. For three days and three nights. Are you going to take it to bed? <laughs> Wriggles. Likes the way it smells, I think. But despite my best efforts, Scruffles rejected the sloth as a bedtime buddy. Oh dear! <laughs> Here we are. Several times and quite conclusively. Eventually, even trying to take him outside without much success. <laughs> At some point in the night though, Scruffles must have succeeded in getting him through the cat flap. At 6am with a heavy mist interfering with the picture, you can see her going crazy with celebration. 
and you'll soon see her dragging the sloth out from behind the small cage. But it seems Mr. Sloth gets stuck again, causing Scruffles to go on another mad leap about, taking her frustration out on poor old Shaky Badger, who is innocently curled up in the cat tower. You might think that's where the sloth story ends, but next morning, the first thing Scruffles did was check on him, and then make up with Shaky Badger and tuck him safely away under the chair. A little later that morning, Scruffles manages to budge the sloth and brings him out to be stashed under the rug. Well, almost, with all her other most prized possessions. So while the sloth didn't fulfil the purpose for which he was engaged, it warms my heart to see how much a part of her daily play routine he's become. It was time to admit defeat and move on to the next plushy test. Our croc. Lots of you pointed out that the sloth probably smelled weird from being made in a factory, and I should have washed the plushies first and slept with them for weeks to fully infuse them with my aroma. It's a tough job, but somebody has to do it. After three full weeks of sleeping with the croc, I stuffed it with a pair of smelly socks for added pungency and then waited for Scruffles to bite. Oh, oh here we go. Literally. <laughs> I wish I could fit in the bedroom with you. Plushy test two. Scruffles. What's this, Scruffy? Will our fearless croc satisfy Scruffles' need for snuggles? <gasps> okay. One of the things about the sloth was I bought it down in a plastic bag, and when I opened that bag, it kind of broke the mood a bit. So I'm not taking any chances this time. Scruffles. Oh, you're going to put him there? No, we're taking him to bed. <laughs> Up top. <laughs> You're not going to throw him out too. Yes, that's a no then. Where do you want him then? It would soon become clear that the plushies were not going to cut it. <laughs> Admittedly, they were pretty big compared to this dainty little ferret. And whilst the fact they smelled of me was very much appreciated, it didn't get them a VIP ticket to the bedroom. Is that it? He's a studio floor toy. Stay tuned though, because as long as your ideas keep rolling in, I'm not giving up. If you want to suggest something to try, pop a comment down below. For the next test, I'm going to make ferret baby finger puppets, which has been suggested by loads of people. I do have to learn to knit first though. <laughs>